Welcome back. Urging our nation's leaders to address America's history with racism and white supremacy, Congressman Jamal Bowman and Senator Cory Booker reintroduced the African American History Act in both the House and the Senate. Congressman Jamal Bowman joins me now to discuss the act and the steps needed to help America finally move forward. Congressman Bowen, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. It's great to be with you. Now, can you talk a little bit about what the African American History Act is? Well, first of all, African American history is American history, and it's about uh, way past time that we stop separating the two. Uh, I know we have a Black History Month where we often take the time to reflect and learn about Black history, but Black history should be taught throughout the year, just like everyone else's history. The importance of this bill is to make sure that we uh, invest in the National African American History Museum so that they can create curriculum that can be used by school districts across the country so that the teaching of African American history is accurate and precise and captures the totality of our history. And it's very important for legislation like this to be introduced and passed, not just at the federal level, but throughout states as well, because we see what's happening in places like Florida and Texas and other states where they're trying to push back against the teaching of accurate African-American history. Now, you mentioned Florida, and I think that's like such a great point, because I really want to know your opinions on this. You know, why do you think that, you know, we struggle, especially when it comes to education? Why is there just so much controversy around this in American schools? Well, hate is rooted in fear and fear. uh, The fear is rooted in, you know, if I have to share space and place and resources and power with other groups, I will no longer sit at the top of this racial caste system that we have in our country. We have to acknowledge the reality. The reality is our country was born of white supremacy and white supremacy continues to live in the DNA of America, whether it's our political system in terms of who's in political power or our economic system in terms of who has incredible wealth in our country. We have to tell the truth about our history, who we are, where we come from, how we've gotten here, and then move forward together. But the fear is of this idea that if I you know, continue to educate, I will empower. And the more I empower, I will take away the power that I have. As we know throughout uh, the times of enslaved Africans, uh, literacy was illegal. You will be raped and lynched and killed uh, if you try to learn to read as as an enslaved person. And so, unfortunately, governors like DeSantis and others are trying to take us back to that. Now, as mentioned, you and Senator Booker plan to invest $10 million over five years to support African-American history educational programs at the National Museum of African-American History and Culture. Can you expand on you know, how these funds will just support these educational programs in general? Well, you have to pay people to curate the information and build the curriculum uh, that's necessary. So this is $10 million over five years. This is $2 million per year. Um, You pay individuals to create the curriculum, but then there's also travel involved. You have to collect artifacts. You have to engage with scholars all over the country to make sure you have present day uh, uh, black uh, heritage and culture and accomplishments as part of this curriculum, as well as historical um, uh, information be part of this curriculum as well. Another key piece that isn't often talked about, you know, when we talk about African-American history, It's also important to talk about uh, African history as well, because we are part of a diaspora um, that have all been uh, victims of the transatlantic slave trade. But we were also part of nation building and democracy building that many European nations came to learn from and help to start uh, their civilizations as well. So um, it's about teaching the totality of our history accurately and the investments go towards people and the curation of the information that's needed.
Now, these educational programs will support and just teach, you know, obviously students, other teachers and parents. Now, I think it was so interested that parents were included in this. Can you talk about why that was important? Well, I'm a, I'm a lifelong educator. Even though I'm in Congress, I, I'm still an educator and I spent 20 years in education before coming to Congress um, and 10 years as a middle school principal. Uh, parents are essential uh, to the overall education um, experiences of their children and of a community. So it's important to have parents at the table learning along um, with their children. I'm a parent of three. My oldest is 21, my second is 13, and my youngest is, is eight. And while they go through their school curriculum, I am learning along with them. So the process of learning is a collaborative uh, ecosystem that includes all stakeholders and parents are central to that. So absolutely, parents need to be a part of this. And many parents like me did not learn about our history when we were in schools growing up, which is part of the problem. Now, in the last few years, since we're on the topic of just talking about parents and education, uh, you know, a lot of outlets are just reporting that many Black Americans are opting for homeschooling their children. Um, and I'm just curious to know your thoughts on that. Could it be the controversy just around teaching African American children and other children just, you know, the history of race in America? I think that's part of it. I, I think the other part of it is, you know, unfortunately, our public school system because many aspects of it is rooted in white supremacy as well, but also a narrow view of what education, learning, and intelligence is. And oftentimes public school systems struggle to meet the unique needs of children and meet the unique needs of families. So families have taken, taken to making the decision to have their children uh, homeschooled. This is why we need a revolution in public education not just with regard to the teaching of African-American history, but the teaching of emotional intelligence, human development, uh, health and wellness, uh, 21st century skills like curiosity, collaboration, creativity. You know, our schools need an upgrade because in many ways they are rooted in uh, 19th century America and we are on our way to the 22nd century. So. Uh, this is why we need a revolution in public education. That's why parents are making these decisions. Now, I'm curious to know, you know, what could be done to ensure that more school age American children, you know, across the country? Because I know right now um, it's like focused on the museum and, you know, certain places uh, can get this education. But I think to move forward, it needs to be like kind of like a group effort. So what could be done to make sure that across the country, more students are learning about American history, which includes, you know, the reality of African-American history? Well, we need parents and students and teachers to get more involved in their local school boards. School boards are very powerful and they make essential decisions that determine what curriculum is taught in our schools and how, those, how curriculum is taught in our schools. So absolutely get involved uh, in your local school board um, or your local municipality to engage uh, members of the city council, trustees, uh, mayor's offices, if you will, to, you know, make sure parent voices are included in what's happening in our schools. Also, parents and, and all of us need to take the, the initiative uh, to learn on our own. Uh, you know, social media and the Internet is a gift and a curse. Uh, there's so much information out there. You can listen to lectures. You can listen, listen to debates. You can learn about different books you should read and you, you can watch documentaries. And there is there is accurate information, a lot of it, but there is inaccurate information as well. The point is to listen to all sides, think critically, and then go to your local library, your local bookstore, engage with your local community so that you can have a collective learning ecosystem in addition to what should be happening in public schools. Now, you know, what are your thoughts on you know, local or leaders who just are against, you know, teaching of African-American history and race in America? And what can parents do if they live in an area where a leader is against that? Yeah, that's incredibly heartbreaking and disappointing um, because our democracy doesn't work unless the electorate is fully uh, functional and literate and have high levels of education. Um, so to... Uh, 
withdraw or not allow uh, a certain aspect of history to be taught, um, that is something that is damaging not just to the, the particular group, but to all Americans. So that, that is just heartbreaking to even, to even hear. Um, parents have to be loud, organized, and push back very aggressively against the marginalization or erasure of, of their history or anyone's history not being taught in our schools. And then they have to organize to vote people out of office who are making these decisions. You know, they count on our apathy and our complacency right. in terms of, you know, how they make these decisions. They know we're not going to push back. Now is the time for us to aggressively push back. Well, I want to thank you so much for joining us, you know, and just talking about this really important conversation. Thank you so much for having me. If you would like to stay informed about all the work Congressman Bowman does, please go to his website, www.bowman.house.gov, or follow him on social media at Jamal Bowman NY. Stay tuned. We have more open for you right after this.